And the local the over draft. again. Going so let's draft. let's look oh. at the draft. Woo. New local. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We had a remake after the servers shit themselves. Yep. So hopefully this will be good. Um, Star yes. Ladder Season 12 Europe. We're only in day number two. It's a best of three matchup right now. Team Secret taking on Moscow Five. Game number one. Moscow Five pull out a really nice comeback on the back of a crazy sniper with two rapiers. You better check that vod out over on Beyond the Summit. Game number two. A quick stop coming out from Team Secret showing what they can do with a sniper, and they get it done in 17 minutes. Yes, everything looks exactly the same so far. They have mimicked the draft to a T. Batrider Venge for Secret, Troll Warlord Dazzle for Moscow 5. We mentioned the uh, the Troll Axe change in terms of uh, that was what Secret was banning out exclusively. They swap it here, and... This is just about where things start brew. to devolve. We saw the brew pick up for yeah. Secret Third, and then the Blood Seeker, and then the Blood Seeker for Moscow Five, and that's when things started going downhill. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. There's the brew, and this time they take the Venomancer. You know what? Maybe the Blood Seeker was a random because they ran out of time before the pause. I bet the Blood Seeker was a random, and we spent all that time just talking about oh yeah, the Garnish thing. Okay, so it was never Wait. meant to be a blood. Seeker. Oh, it was never meant to be a blood. I seeker. think they just ran out of time. Oh, and got ran, and that, that little one's that little kumquat. He's gonna. Be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the banana. <laughs> they call him banana mancer, but they should start the kumquat mancer. <laughs> yeah, it's pr it's pretty appropriate. There is a name for a small. What's the name of the small bananas? Let me see here. Plantains. Yes, that's yep. it. Plantains. Plantain good good call. <laughs> Good call on that. My first girlfriend's mom was from Venezuela. She cooked time? plantains all the time. That's why I remember it. <laughs> Obscure bullshit. Aren't okay. they usually like sweeter? As um, well, or no? no, it's the opposite. There, you have to More cook right. them. They're hard. Oh, they, they, you oh, have to like, okay, kind of okay. fry them up and do all. You usually cook them with sugar. They're quite delicious, but you have to cook them. Right. Yeah, you, they're right. not like a banana where you just peel it, one and done, just devour it. It's yeah. not your value no. energy food like that. You no. got to do some work. <laughs> value. Hey, it's dude, cheaper because it's smaller. No, bananas are value energy, man. That's yeah. that's why Dota yeah. players are addicted to bananas. They just want a quick little energy yeah. boost to get started. If only started. they could throw away the peels. Yeah. That's all we ask. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Eat the bananas and throw the peels everywhere. <laughs> This summit, there's always like you find the hidden banana pile. It's just like, yeah. oh, so that's where everybody dumped their banana peels. Oh, good. Um, all right, so we're back underway where we were before. The ban on the lean is the newest thing, but yeah, no, no blood seeker. No, it was Lena a venomancer was grab. Out. The venomancer. I like the, the venomancer thing. because you got two big initiators like your brew and bat rider on secret, and wards can be just a headache when you kind of just want to get into the fight and you're trying to rummage through the woods, find opportunities to make a jump, but you're like moving your way through venomancer wards that are constantly spanned out, so your blink can never really come into play. And, well, we'll have to see what kind of position this Venomancer will be in. If it's going to be a support or a core. got to be a core. Come if on. it's a core, I always love to see if we can see the AA pop up. Yeah. It's the second one. It's quite possible. Whoa. If they go AA the Veno puppy. Dazzle, though, that is... They, they need some stuns. The puppy Marana, man. Yeah, so you mentioned it before yeah. that he used to play it a lot, doesn't play it as much anymore. This is exciting. Yeah. And I, I remember them him saying... I don't know if it was from him directly or from the grapevine through players, but... You know, when he was playing a lot of the Marana, he favored the Radiant side Marana. He felt like on that side, there, or maybe it was the Dire. But there's like one side where you get a lot more of those nooks and crannies where you can fire an arrow through the woods from behind and you just never see it coming. Right, right. I can see that for both sides, though. On Dire's side and the Radiant, you can go up over by the Ancients, fire it from up on that side. You can even go down towards the small pool yeah. camp over there. I feel like the map changes where they moved the Roche Pit opened up a lot more little, little yeah. spots like that for yeah. heroes like Marana. But nighttime is always the time to strike. A lot harder to see that arrow coming when you don't have nearly as much vision just uh, in general around the lanes. So Moscow 5, thinking about this, if they go for the Ancient Apparition like you expected, I think they'll just get run over. They just don't have enough control at that point. I, your, your stun is the 10% bash on Troll when he's in melee form, and that's just not enough. Yeah, they need the stun. And then you look at Team Secret where you've got a lasso, a magic missile, a boulder toss, uh, an arrow... There's there's a lot of control on the side of secrets. So. Still would not mind seeing the Nyx assassin here. I feel like it could be a good way to pick off a pesky roaming Marana who will probably more than likely be very selfless and very low level throughout the game. Could make for an easy pick there, but they're going to go with a Sand King. More of a greedy or secondary support. Really has fallen off in recent time, but is one of the old tried and trues mm -hmm. as far as support goes. You just get him in the jungle, get that bits of farm, and then you got a guy who can really close the distance very fast, and the epicenter man has just utter lane domination. Can you just stop giggling over there? 
I'm reading all this banana talk, and it's making me laugh. There's too much phallic It's imagery. making me hungry, yeah, right so now. let's get I, this I'm series really going hungry. right now. You know, we've been... We yeah. can't leave, all right, guys? Like, we're, when these pauses happen, we're just sitting here yeah. shooting the the stuff. Well, yeah, we have like an hour break between these series, but yeah. you never know when it's going to start. Yeah. It's like, we, all, we, as we, soon as they're ready, we're going, so we, you have to sit here yep. ready to go. Yeah. I could have cooked if a big they, lunch. If they remake and we're, bacon. and we're not in that slot... Yes. We're gonna hear about it on Reddit. Yep. So it's it's been a long day. So this, this game could be a little a little clowny, folks. Fair warning. I do like the Sand King choice though. Finally gives them Five some stun, um, yeah. some good team fight. Let's them control the lanes a little bit. And they get their stun. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. like you said, their, their that's, first that's big, the big stun. Thing. Clockwork banned out by Secret. Assuming Moscow Five need an off laner. It's surprising that they passed over the Lion and got the Sand King instead. Mm -hmm. They really wanted stun because he's got two. <laughs> <laughs> and the mana drain would have been nice on Brew. Yeah. Insta sheep for bat. Yeah. I mean, the Sand King is just greedier. So I, I guess yeah. they want to work the jungle a little bit, open up their yeah. lanes. I mean, um, that's uh, the only big advantage Sand King has. Is, is ultimate is better for holding Dying high ground, team. that kind of stuff, more team fight oriented. Yeah. Um, now Storm, the final ban for Moscow 5. Any notable mid lane matchups that Storm would just easily be able to get the upper hand and maybe Moscow 5 are, are going to be going for here? That they're like, oh, we can't have a Storm because this blank hero is good. <laughs> Sniper is the one that comes to mind. Who yeah. else is there that really gets wrecked by Storm? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, everybody gets wrecked by a, a, a fed storm. Spectre, um, the last pick, though, for secret. Yeah, I guess Drill Ranger, the other he hero that really doesn't like to play That's against true. storm. That's true. And they have uh, respectable range between the troll and the Venomancer. I mean, Drill plus Troll Warlord, we've fat, seen before. They have no good front line, no fatty. Yeah, I mean, I guess Troll could Ten be their, their pseudo fatty. Yeah, but. and Sand King leading it in. But Do you, you, like don't pick, you don't want to pick a Drill into a Spectre, though. Yeah, exactly. So gonna, now they might have to... Maybe that's what Secret was thinking. Yeah. Storm last ban. We need to cover our bases here. Let's get a carry that can close these gaps. But when's the last time they played this hero? Mm. I mean, I'll look it up because I'm a co-caster and I have access to the data. But I'll Do look it. it up here and see. I, I I would have to say Secret have not ran Spectre in recent history unless it was a match that I happened that to miss. Sweet, sweet data. Well, no, it's, it's not a go-to pick for them, but... I feel like it is pretty good here. He can haunt in, and none of these heroes have escape mechanisms except the Sand King. That's he what you wish he had a strike. lion. <laughs> yeah, so every like he haunts in, reality's on one, and pretty much any support he chooses is going to be food. Whoa, that's a tusk. That so is. The, is it a core tusk? No, uh, Renator picked. Is it a, it's a core Venomancer? A core, core troll? Core king. I think uh, it's a farming bah, bah, sand bah, king. Bah, bah, bah. Is this an aggro lane they're going to set up and keep like Venomancer in a solo safe lane spot? This is a very that's interesting show choice me for playing Moscow Venomancer. 5. Okay, maybe a mid. It's going to be a mid lane Venomancer. So mid Veno, safe lane troll, off lane Sand King. Are they going to aggro try with a Sand King Dazzle Tusk? Are they going to aggro try with the troll and let Sand King stay? I have no idea how they're going to lane this. This is all right. I'm not very seeing Spectre. No Spectre there. Picked up ever. They've never played Spectre. I mean, unless I'm is that on this patch. Yeah. Okay, on this patch they haven't. Played I mean, it. yeah. Uh, well, that I would believe. I thought we were. That's what matters. Remaining. Well, yeah. Yeah, no. Well, the first time ever is pretty exciting. Check, check. How many times have they played Spectre total as as Team Secret? That's, uh, that's let's see. All submit. Uh, 142. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right? Uh, no, no, that's 142 matches. Wait, what is this the hell right? Are you looking at? No, it's, it's no. They've never played it's it. Zero. They've never played. They've Spectre. never played Spectre yeah. as Team Secret. Okay, Secret has never picked Spectre. This is really. Ladies cool. and gentlemen, you are witnessing history. Hey, we got a first timer over here. Yesterday, Team Secret broke records with their huge gyrocopter Agnum's refresher. Mm -hmm. Now a Spectre. What will they do? What are they going to do next? They These gotta, guys just keep breaking they record gotta, after record. They got to channel their inner Pat Soul. That's what they got to do. Yes, yes. That is good advice. Their Yawar Pat Soul kind of style here. Moscow 5. They start the invade. Boot first tusk. He's got that snowball. He's ready for a fight. Who are they going to find, though? ZXC ventures up top. He bumps into Puppy. And, ooh, the snowball. They're getting their buddies inside of it. They're pinging out on Puppy. Oh, my They're God. They're going to dive this tower. <laughs> Puppy goes down. It's a first blood. Afterlife gets it. But now the turnaround. S4 gets a clap on the entire team. Sand King goes down first. ZXC on the run. But is it Show Me that gets left behind? They're going to the turn hell? it. Oh, my God. Oh. Now Ortiz, he gets bashed. He's in trouble. He goes down. It's another snowball. What did they do? They're on the high ground. 
What is this game? M5? No! No! This is a disaster. No! What do you what? do, GG? We're done! <laughs> We're done! Ladies and gentlemen, Star Ladder 12. This has got to be some of the clients that I've ever cast in a what couple of days. What do you do when this happens? This is the... the this is the worst thing you could do. <laughs> this is the worst. They don't have a TP. The quarter doesn't fly for three minutes. <laughs> it has to make its way all the way there. Oh my God! This There's is no over. Way that courier's making it there. I have never seen a team throw away the early game harder than this. They could snowball into the creep wave when it comes in. Maybe can they do that? I don't know. There it is. Okay, they'll snowball to the creep wave. That's something, but okay. their lanes are hashtag fucked. Oh, arrow! Comes arrow. In, nails Chomi in the face. He eats a plantain. The creeps are killing him. He might die to neutrals at this rate. Okay, he's alive for now. M5 with the four man squad through the jungle. What an opener. Thank God they can get to that creep wave and reach it. I mean, when would they have made it out? Ever? I mean, that's three good. minutes once the courier can bring out four TP scrolls, uh, I guess, you, is where you're waiting. I would love to have heard their Skype slash whatever at that point. <laughs> like, guys, what the hell did we just do? They're looking at How are we like, going to get out from here? Really, Renator? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, all right. Well, Zyg gets a good start in the off lane. Five and one on the bat rider. Mid S4 is already level three. Zoning out Shomi, who's level one, gets crit to the face. This should be pretty easy for the brewmaster mid. And in the safe lane, well, Cheesy only got a couple of last hits, but this is recoverable, I guess. You look at the graph, and it's like, hey, we got first blood, and then we lost every lane. <laughs> okay. I wonder Ooh, gotta how simmer much... Down. Okay, so a, what was lost? A minute worth of time? Yeah. Probably well, of yeah. laning time? Oops. Yeah, they went wave, out in about two. Uh, 30 seconds. 35 seconds is when they snowballed down. So maybe a minute is about the time they got to the lanes, though S4 got a solo kill on the Venno, because he's three levels up on him. I mean, you got a level two Thunderclap. Venno doesn't have anything. Except uh, Venomous Gale, which, yeah, does not do a hell of a lot for you in that kind of a situation. Absolutely mind-boggling, but let's let's get back into formation here. M5 compose themselves, put down a nice little block of the pull camp there in the top lane. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see as things do reside quite a bit, that they're going to look to get a bit of a recovery here. And it's going to be an aggro tri-lane setup here with this Tuscar. So they aggro try with the Sand King, solo safe lane. All right, an interesting choice. He'll get some XP out of this. How will this aggro try work? Tusk, Dazzle, Troll. I feel like it's pretty potent. Throw out an Ice Shard, hit him with a Heal Bomb, then you got Whirling Axes in there. It's it's pretty scary. But back to the mid. That's ah, another kill on the Venno. S4's got a double damage rune. And yeah, this, this mid lane, though, is just a total disaster. S4 is going to have like a six-minute blink at this rate. This is crazy, but they got to do something drastic to bring this game back. Look at them dive this top lane. They are just trying their best to bully their way back into this game. Arrow will fly. Good timing. Goes right through the creeps, obviously. Snowball saves them. They launch it right back onto Arteezy. Do they consider making the go? But they're going to be going right into a creep wave with a catapult here. Oh, they're going in so deep. Arteezy in the tree line. This could turn around to be disastrous. Oh. A nice ice shards locks them in place. Oh. Shallow Grave keeps Big Num alive. They lose the Venno. Puppy really wants Big Num. He tries to time it out. He will get the last auto attack. It's a one for two trade in the top. Now S4 starts to rotate over. Maybe he can catch one. Nope, he will just move back to lane. So, so far the aggro try is working out pretty well. Ridiculous. So four to four. We're even though as far as kills go. So this is the big problem though. Aside from the brewmaster who's picked up two kills already, all that good stuff. Look at Zai. 28 and two. He's doubling the next highest farmer who is S4 because he spent so much time picking up kills. I mean, this Sand King is getting next to nothing out of the bottom lane in terms of farm, getting some okay XP, but Batrider is, he's on track to be an absolute monster this game. And when you have a early Blink Dagger Brew and an early Blink Dagger Bat, oh boy, that is a formula for a very scary early mid-game. And if they're able to bring in and rake in the serious kills, the comeback factor it just becomes that much more limited. S4, they're committing for a dive on the mid lane. Oof. Hesitant play, but a hasted Tusk runs into S4. They snowball each other up, and now they go on in. S4 is going to be pulling out the TP. They get the stun onto the Tusk, and it will make for a safe escape right there. S4 gets himself back into the fountain. Bottles on up, and we'll make the walk back to mid lane. Crisis averted. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So checking in on the bottom, Afterlife doing what he can. He's got, oh, oh, up top, is that a fight? Nope, just getting nearby, Puppy poking his head into the lane. So the nice thing about having Sand King in lane is he gets a lot of XP, he'll have his ult pretty early on, but the, the sort of bad thing is that in the jungle, he can farm really, really quickly. And I, I feel like this is sacrificing some potential lane efficiency from M5. And it just feels like they're not getting enough out of these lanes. Secret with about a thousand XP and gold advantage right now. The aggro try has done some work, but Arteezy still doing all right. Only level seven. He'll catch up though. This is the only thing. level four. Seven CS. Or only seven I know CS, you mean. rather. I know yeah. you mean. Yeah, level four. No, it's a it's a good catch. But yep. the mid and the bottom are going so well that I feel like they can just come up, gank this lane. Once Arteezy hits six, he can start getting assists with Haunt and. The road recovery for Spectre should be pretty easy this game when you're talking about a Brewmaster and a uh, Bat Rider getting Ooh. this much farm. <clears throat> Wants to commit onto okay. Troll Arrow. Nice connection onto Big Num. Big Num's going to be dead. He can't get the Grave off, though. Oh, Grave TP? He's fine. See you later. Oh, okay. Nice ice shards from Renator. But the big story is the bottom lane. A solo kill on the Bat Rider from this Sand King. He doesn't even have an ultimate. Wait. How the hell did that happen? Whoa, you're telling me Zai, who was the dominator there in the bottom lane, goes down. The solo guy that grab? I just said was like the saving grace that has this. Caster cursed the hell out of him for that yeah. one. Yeah. I mean, if there was an epicenter, I could I could see it. You know, you get caught off guard. That maybe just... you don't have a flame break, no way to interrupt it, but it had to be something about maybe Zai committing into a wave of creeps, gets stun locked in place, and just with the sandstorm and lack of detection, maybe he just takes too much damage. But well, that's pretty big. Fortunately, it was simultaneous with the action of breaking out on top yeah, lane. and Kind of levels things out. Mid lane, primal split. Looks like S4 just wants a solo pick on to show me. TP coming in. It will be the Tusk, but is he going to be able to do a hell of a lot here? Cyclone onto the Dazzle. Kuro's there. Stun gets disjointed by the Snowball. Show me could actually lit. Okay, I was going to say, why is everybody just standing there? All right, so split disconnect across the, the whole border probably. It's supposed to be a nose piercing, but it looks just like a big wart there on her nose. That's a nose piercing? I think so. Well, I why would they just give her a wart? You're like, you know what? She looks a little too pretty. You know what? She's let's, so let's, pretty. Let's just let's, put a big blemish on her nose. Let's put a fucking pimple right on her I'm, nose. I'm about 90% sure that's supposed to be a nose ring, but... Mm, looks like she needs some clear cell, dude. Yeah. I like that Jug's just... Yeah, it's like, thumb up. nice pimple. Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> good luck picking up the boys with that, dude. Congratulations on your snowball to the cliff. <laughs> Oh, oh Dota. Star Ladder, man. Continues to deliver. <laughs> oh, it just doesn't stop. It it really doesn't. If only we didn't have the disconnect problems, we would just have this quality clown Dota. I know, I know. Without all the little hub, bub, hiccup. Is it just us, or is it the players as well? Do we come back to a one team dead, or do we come back to a pause? Okay, okay I'm in, everyone. and everyone is reconnecting here. Okay, so, so what happened? Need to what, what the hell happened? Tell him, Dreyich. Shout-outs to Dreyich and his fantastic beard. Yep. Dreyich, badass. Puppy just landed an arrow onto Big Num. The stun is already over. Um... But Arteezy is making so fisticuffs. So where, where are we in the mid? Let's CXC see. The and Panda. Well, we lost the timers. Okay, he's just about to go back into Panda form. Renator's already used his snowball. No mana for the ice shards. Kuro. He's used everything he has. Show me. Maybe gets away here. S4 does not have enough Manta. If, unless he eats these wand charges, Chomi might still die if he can wand, clap. There, there you go. He can do it, and he will. Now Renator, a little bit low, but Afterlife on his way over. Burrow Strike on to S4. And you've got Ice Shards. Nowhere for the Brewmaster to go, but back towards the Tusk, and he'll take the Axe. That is Renator that ends the streak. Gets a nice pet to his name. M5 are now up on kills. Six to five. I don't know, man. If they find themselves back... Into this game after that start. Yeah. That would be pretty crazy. That would be pretty freaking crazy. But here we go. Back action. Zai returns after that solo pickoff. Bottom lane gets stunned up now. Oh, oh Epi. Epi. Oh, it channels and connects. Zai goes down. He had already purchased the blink dagger. Okay. Oh, no. He oh. went boots of travel. He wow. went with the early boots of travel build up. The, the bone seven, right? 
I think so. We've seen some bat riders go for blink right into BOTs instead of going for Yules or something like that, but I have not seen much in the way of BOT first bat. Bone Seven's one of the few, I believe, where yeah. if he gets a good start on a bat rider, he'll go right for the BOTs. That's true, but this is not even really a good start on the bat rider. He's now died twice. The one good thing about the BOTs first is it gives you a lot of potential in terms of moving around the map. You yeah. Obviously, teleport around, but. You can move around the jungle that much more quickly. So you can stay involved in fights, TP in to save your friends, do some cheeky stuff like that. Does seem a bit peculiar here. So he'll go right back down to the bottom lane, continue farming afterlife. I was thinking that maybe wasting some efficiency in the jungle, but now he's number one on net worth, getting two kills on the Bat Rider solo. Then all those kills early on helping out a bit. Arrow in the mid lane connects onto Chomi, but does S4 actually have the damage? Afterlife comes in and says, get away from my friend. They turn it around. The Brewmaster Snowball. falls again. Snowball in onto Puppy. He's got oh. a leap. And he'll be just fine. Ice shards fall short. Oh. Well, it's a good thing with the Marana. Pretty elusive. You can easily sidestep a Snowball coming. Mm -hmm. No problem about that. In fact, they're lined up together. Up does Arteezy die here? ZXC dives in ranged axes. Melee axes. Tower goes down to the Radiant. Okay, he doesn't commit for it. And another pause. And another pause. But you're looking at Moscow 5 now moving on up 8-5, to five, taking back the net worth lead after the disastrous start. A little as they go. Artiz is going to be forced to TP back to the fountain at this point. ZXC is going to kind of scout it out, make sure he is gone. They will see that he is gone and kind of adjust from there. But no, they still scout it out. No, he's not there. Bat Rider down bottom, goes in on to Afterlife, hits him with a Flame Break, S4 stunned up, has a Primal Split, nice Burrow Strike for Afterlife. Now the Haunt from Arteezy, they want to do something here, Reality in, no detection, but they've got the Fire, so Afterlife will eventually burn to death, oh. and he'll just take the Fiery Death as it comes. Arteezy gets an assist out of it, and now they'll try to transition to a Tower Push. Can Arteezy find this last hit? He certainly needs it. No, it looks like they'll give it to S4. And a pause. Right now, S4 is like, you know, if this messes up my last hit, I'm going to be very angry. Packet loss. So I, oh, Arteezy says, yes, I could not dagger. Should be fine. <laughs> Big numb. I like this positive. It should be... It's fine. Hey, it's fine. I'm getting no packet loss. Oh, S4, he misses the last hit. Goddamn pause! <laughs> That's really sad, actually. Go! Oh, well. You can see he's got dude, good timing still. 10 minutes in, 15.54 as far as gold. It's getting pretty good as far as meeting that quota for a blink dagger. Yeah, well, that last hit on the tower would have helped quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he knows that, too. I'm defaulting into Mon notes, dude. It's getting <laughs> these pauses, man. The tower will bring these you pauses. more gold <laughs> that will get you your blink dagger faster. Thank you, John Madden. Getting more gold is a way to achieve your blink dagger. Let's I talk like a this. moment about Venomancer. I was just gonna say, let's check All out right. this Venomancer let's look, set. Look, look at these at cosmetics, Venomancer. dude. He looks like a looks like a poisonous snake or something. I don't know. Uh, you don't like it? I like the lobster claws that he's got going neat. on. I never understood like I know what a Hydralisk is and that he's yeah. modeled after that, but it's same with Bane. Bane's got these extra arms that are just kind of flapping around. Venom's the same. He doesn't do anything with him. I guess they spit some poison. Pudge, really. Pudge has a little extra arms. One of them, like, holds a cleaver, I think. Yeah, but, but it's for like, Pudge, it's because he's like a Frankenstein abomination yeah. that some crazy dude like, so? sewed together. So yep. this isn't, like, an alien. This is <laughs> So he can have whatever the hell he wants. He can have bananas coming out of his back. Okay. All right. That's true. That's true. A nice cosmetic set here. What's he got? What set is this, actually? The acid tentacles oh, of the oh, Hydra. Oh, we gotta go. Gotta go, gotta Screw go. Screw that set. Yeah, forget you, Venomancer. Okay, so no kills coming out right now. Eight to six. It is secret at the okay. deficit. And it looks like uh, ZXC on his troll. He's going to go with more of the pub-ish style build on your troll. He's got the Helm of the Dominator. Okay. Probably going to go with the SMY thereafter. And at that point, you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> you can go for Roche. Ancient stacks become a lot easier. You can go into man fight mode. Mm -hmm. But man fight mode is a bit tricky here. I mean, a BKB is also going to be something he considers. A fair amount of disable and lockdown there with your magic missile stun. And plus, you got to consider eventually a drunken haze will be picked up by S4, and that could do work on someone like Troll. Yep. Uh, Blink Dagger now comes out onto the Bat Rider. Wow, he went BOTs into that Blink super wow, fast. Wow, he already has a Blink. 
I mean, I, taking down the tower certainly helps, but it yeah. felt like he just got those ruby red shoes not yeah. too long ago. Although the pauses do mess up your perception of Dota time, I have yeah. to admit. Oh, I don't even know what day it is anymore with all these pauses. So that's really good news for Secret, though. They need somebody to start controlling some tempos and find some kills. S4 very close to his blink. About 200 gold off, just trying to CS in the top lane, but that's not really happening. M5 starting to rotate up. RTZ, still not too much to his name as he's now relegated to the Oh, jungle. mid lane, they get the jump onto the Venomancers, just trying to finish out a Midas, bro, but he's going to get caught stunned. Arrow comes through, beautiful KS setup right there from Puppy. Yep, he still buys the Midas recipe, though, so not all bad. S4 up in the top lane, gets off a primal split, but it's used defensively here. Can he find a kill out of it? Big Num, stunned up by the boulder, but he has a grave. He should be just fine. RTZ on his way up, trying to push back Renator, but there's ZXC. It's a haunt. He tries the reality away, and it looks like he goes towards the mid lane. Sand King kills Puppy somewhere else. We're going to stay true to the course. Zai coming in. Once the cleanup kills, Brew brings down the Dazzle. And can they find another one? Looks like they'll make a ZXC sandwich as Kuro rotates in from the mid lane. Swap back. Sticky stacking up. There's your magic missile. And flame break just as Chomi comes in. Connects with the Venomous Gale. Arteezy oh. picks off the top row on the backside. Sand King comes in, brings down the Spectre. I feel like I just need to follow the Sand King. I'm not following the right heroes to find the kill. It's all over the place, to be honest. I mean, yeah, Afterlife is just doing some serious mileage coverage across this map. He moves in the mid lane, gets a nice pickoff kill onto the weak and wounded puppy, set up with the burrow, takes his business to the top lane, and is able to clean house with this fancy-ass Blink Dagger and Epi combo. Puts down the Spectre. Good work, M5. Move ahead now. 10-9. to nine. In this matchup, a one and one series so far. Game number three. There are a lot of rares on the line. 96 to four, the yeah. Dota 2 lounge bets. <laughs> Bringing that up again. People are sweating right now. Dude, Some really people are. are getting real excited. Like, they're like, oh my God, I put one Arcana on this and I'm about to be a millionaire. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> wait to see the, uh, the the screenshots from the victories after this. If Moscow if, 5 take the win. If they get the win. If they, yeah. Now, Venomancer, 12 minute Midas. This is a pretty good timing for the mid lane. And. This is one of these heroes that can be very difficult to deal with if he gets all the farm that he wants. Once he gets that blank, Ags, Veil, BKB kind of a kit, there is just no easy way to deal with it. As your BKBs get down to five seconds, that poison hurts. Renator, speaking of hurt, he's going to walk into a lasso poison. Now the high ground going to be the name of the game for him. Actually lives through the onslaught, gets into a snowball, but rest assured it'll be melted pretty quick by all this fire. Oh, really? Yeah, there we go. It's a nice thing with Tusk because you can always prolong your death, which does create more time for them to kind of be there and deal with you. And that's when it's nice if you get like something like a blink dagger on your tusk. If you kind of go with that support road of a tusk where you want to be a savior or kind of help out your team or make good initiation calls. Oh, here comes a haunt though from uh, Spectre mid lane. They're going to get the kill on the Venomancer who dishes out everything he's got. Even the Dazzle ult, but they turn right back onto the Dazzle. Shallow Grave going to be popped. There's going to be the Cyclone. He comes down. He's going to be uh, in for a rude awakening here as he just gets clubbed. He goes down. Back from the dead. Tusk moves in. Snowball. Boop. Bink. Gets the chop. Kuroki falls. Afterlife comes from the low ground, but they chase. Onto the high ground is going to be Secret Squad. Zai moving forward. Walrus Punch gets the connection. Afterlife still living on. Well, oh, just as I say that, jump in. Thunderclap on his head. Now, now Nader, is he in some trouble? The sigil is down. Oh, really what an out. arrow from Puppy. Okay, he's definitely not going to live now. Sigil ain't going to save him off. Oh, one. my God. Oh, no, the <laughs> sigil. Puppy thought the auto attack went off, but it didn't. He still snowballs forward. They get the kill, but oh my God. a little close for comfort there. <laughs> he, like, turned back and away. I'm like, come no, on, it's, buddy. The, the sigil slows your attack speed, so he was in Puppy's mind. It's like, all right, auto attack and run. Yeah. That was the normal time for an auto attack, but he didn't like, quite last long enough. Yeah, exactly. It just You're didn't pull quite. that string. It's like just. Let go of the arrow! Come on! Oh, uh, man. Well, still it is secret. They get some big momentum off that. You look at the team fight recap, and it's a good 2,600 net worth game for them, and they desperately needed it. This gold graph is all over the place, but they strike on back, and they are in pretty good shape. Now back to the top lane. Looks like there's a rotation on the way. ZXC hit by the Spectral Dagger. Venge wrapping around the backside. Hits him with a missile. This is the follow-up here, though. S4 has the Blink Dagger. No Primal Split. They see the gray or the uh, weave, and everybody just backs up. So now 11 to 14. Zai, over 100 CS now on his bat rider. The highest one in the game. Highest is net worth as well. He's really putting to use those boots of travel, covering across the map, taking away now all this farm in the jungle of M5. Could go for the four staff now. Pretty much has the gold to buy it outright. 
And another smoke at the ready to put it to use here if that's what he wants to do. Temporarily gets himself stuck on a cliff though. Yeah. You know, like you do. And now we'll be able so, to TP out. Mid tier one tower. Taking some damage here. Venno wards just uh, keeping this lane pushed up. Need a little slow poke. Chip damage that tier one mid, but Dyer's it'll fall eventually. Moscow 5 now grouped up in the top lane. This aggro try has worked out very, very, very well for them. Troll pretty farmed. And this safe lane Sand King has gone almost even better. He's just hiding in the tree line. Ready and waiting for someone to walk by, but... Arteezy is just having such a hard game as the Spectre. <laughs> two and two. Look how low he is on the net worth. Mm -hmm. 3,700. The CS is only uh -oh. about 24. He needs this they kill. Him. He needs this kill. Lose on forward. Gets the dagger. Burrow strike, though. Connects nicely onto two. Afterlife looking to run. Sandstorm. Flame break. Nice dodge with the blink. They even oh, pop the out the dust. Him. It's, that's, it's not going to connect, so we could reuse Sandstorm, but it's not going to get there. They get the kill. It's S4 who grabs it. That was uncomfortably close. Yeah. He almost got away. He juked the dust. He had a burrow strike in like half a second when he died. He maybe could have reset things and survived there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Chomi gets off the ultimate, but swap into arrow. Snowball comes in, resets things, save him, saves him, but the primal split comes out. Fire gets laid down. Chomi goes down, and now Renator falls as well. Ends up being a two for nil. Well played by the Tusk, but just not enough. Puppy dies to the DOTs. Pretty much the Too name much of the game almost for M5 is just how hard it is to take down these heroes. You can see on the top, the Sand King able to be elusive with his Sandstorm, his Blink and Burrow Strike, Tusk with Snowball, Dazzle with Shallow Grave. This is not an easy team to bring down, but Secret still managed to get it done. Now adding pressure on the Tier 1 Tower mid lane. It could be a good old exchange, though, as Moscow 5 go to work here on the bottom. It's been quiet here for this troll as far as getting involved with some of these fights. He's taking a little bit more of that me time, which he certainly needs to do. Ooh, nice shards. Almost connect onto S4, but he'll be just fine. Makes it out. 17 to 12. Let's check in on Arteezy's farm. Looks like he will just be trying to pull up for the Radiance. Radiance Thought he may go more combative build, look for like drums, maybe that urn. We've seen some Spectres have some success with that, but he will stay true to the course. Look for a Radiance. Can't really say Radiance Rush at this point, but he'll get it as fast as he can. Yeah, and it looks like he'll have space now. There doesn't seem to be any sort of Moscow 5 invading, keeping pressure there. They've done their job already, kind of beating down Arteezy, and they've allowed their troll to kind of be the one core of this game, at least for now, until he does catch up with that Radiance grab. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how long they want to wait for this troll. His Sage and Yash are about to be complete. Yeah. And then maybe they look to create space around that Roche area, maybe sneak in there, do a little behind the back. It's not going to be easy, though, against Secret's lineup and Zai's Batrider. Yeah, definitely not. I haven't seen him really use this HOD too much. Does he have a creep hanging out somewhere? Usually you'll see that Alpha Wolf picked up just to give the aura. So you have a little bit of extra damage. M5, not going to mess around with that. Instead, they just go for the Tier 1 mid. There's no Glyph. So not an easy way to defend here. Maybe a deny. Nope, goes to the Troll Warlord. Arrow flies through. Will not connect on anyone. So Secret just lose one of their access points. It's their second Tier 2 tower yep. lost. Not a big deal, but helps out M5 just a little. M5 should step back. Grab up the items they probably earned from that tower takedown and go for the bottom tier one next. Mm -hmm. That's the next access point that could allow Secret to contest any sort of Roche. And you can already see Big Nummy's moving to put down that high ground ward so that they will have the vision behind the tower. They can scout out if any TP rotations are going to be coming in. They already could potentially see this one coming out. And yeah, you see right there, Zai. They think that they're actually already going for the Roche area, but that is not the case. Zai is still just so massively far from that amazing start he had. You look at his yeah, inventory. Madness. Did you already mention that? No, he just picked it up. All right. So the, the ultra move speed build here for your yeah. bad rider. He really is doing the bone seven build though. Wasn't yeah. bone seven the guy that he's first started really doing fast. Mask of Madness? Yeah. So this is really a pain. I want to say at least. Out of the Pitner Armand book. Just do a little bit of everything here. Then he can get his gem, get a refresher, BKB. Up top, smoke, Renator, as well as Afterlife looking for a pickoff onto Arteezy. Smoke gets broken. Rotation over from S4. He does have a blink primal split ready. And this gank not happening. They keep Arteezy safe. Radiance Still only 2,600 gold towards attack. the Radiance. They keep Arteezy safe, but M5 do keep Arteezy away from the farm, which is also good. But now Moonlight Shadow going to be popped here. Looking to go on an adventure. You see both supports scouting out the M5 jungle while on the top lane. Taking flight. Zai looking to move on forward here. Reality as they're able to scout Whoa. out the Tusk and they take him down. No lasso. Close Necesito. Call. Trying to TP, but... Flame breaks there to interrupt it. Nicely done. Easy pick. Now in the bottom lane. Swap Ooh. into arrow. Curl and Puppy are on point today. Big Nom goes down before he can grave. Great stun lock 
But Sand King comes in. He'll make it a one for one. Support for support. And the Sand King, ooh, the big breadwinner here as he now secures his fourth staff off that. Venomancer, after grabbing the Midas and building up some farm, next item gets a Blink Dagger. So the early start of that Kamikaze kind of build up mm -hmm. for Venomancer. Uh, probably going to be looking to go for an Agnum Scepter next. Yeah, and then pretty definitely. much you dive in, hit R, spray everything you got out there, and just hope that secret will wither away. Yep, spray and pray. That's all you got to do if you're on the Venomancer. Close your eyes and hope for the best. Yep, that's why. That's how I do it. That's how we do. That's how I do it in bed. <laughs> Fifteen hundred gold up on Zai. Curious where he goes next. Does he start working on a refresher this early? We're only twenty-one minutes in. Maybe a BKB could be a smart choice for him as his next real item. Yeah, BKB Does help mitigate that damage on Venom. Could be the pipe guy for his team. Why not? Right? Ah, pipe guy. Okay. Pipe guy. I feel like at this rate though, he's gonna have slot issues if he goes for a pipe because he's already. Almost capped out with slots for now. ZXC lassoed, pulled back behind the tower. They've got the damage to bring him low, but can they finish him off? S4, Primal Split after the clap. Afterlife gets off an Epi, does some good damage, but no kills. ZXC very oh. low, will finally go down to S4. Now he's chasing out Renator. Looks like he'll continue to chase there. Kuro with a stun on the Chomi, right into an arrow. Chomi should be destined to fall, and Zai tangling with the bat, or with the, uh, the guy that just killed him, the Sand King. Wow, Bignum, what a save on the Venomancer. He does end up going down. Oh, what a jump and clean out from S4. Ultra kill on your brew. What an Ugh. awkward fight. That was all of these little 1v1s where everybody yeah. just like, it was like basketball. Just, all right, I've got this guy. I've got my guard here. And it worked out very well for Secret. They just have not even more sustainability. They just had superior movements there. It was a very awkward situation for M5 because the tower is also really low, and Dazzle's like, I, I want to make sure we get this tower gold, so he mm -hmm. goes for that, and then he sees Venomancer nearby, pops off a few heals, gets a late uh, last-second shallow grave to keep him alive, but of course, there's fights spreading all over the place, so there's only so much in, you can do and so much focus. When things break out like that, that's when you really test your nerves. Yeah, definitely. I think also for M5, they were on the back foot given their troll was the one that died first. He's their big damage dealer. He has the bulk of their farm. And outside of that, in Epicenter, they don't have as much big damage to do. Oh, top lane. Arrow connects onto Afterlife. That's where he's headed in a moment. Or is it? He is so nope. damn tanky. Holy Toledo. Oh. They interrupted, though. I think they'll still bring him down. They lay down the fire on top of his sandstorm. Mm, and, barbecue well, scorpion. Yeah, lobster crab here, whatever the hell he is. He's going down. Look okay. at this, though. Now go five. They see a lot of attention on top lane. and They can do this quick. They, they sneak out into the Roche pit. I don't see the medallion. Someone's got a medallion, right? Or no, that's just Dazzle Weave. Yeah. They don't need it, though. Troll does it so damn fast. Yeah. Secret smoke up. They start making oh, movements. Oh, they got to run there quick. The Bat Rider, the one who can really get it done, was the one who helped out with that kill top gotta lane. Got to pull the trigger on the haunt. Just scare him out of the Roche pit. They're not going to get here in time. Roche goes down oh. to Radiant. Troll picks up the Aegis. Ha now the haunt comes in. S4 pokes forward. Who do they have here? Sand King buys back for this. Snowball buys him a little bit of time. Solo Grave onto Big Num. But Shomi will be the first target to go down. Now they finish off the Tusk. It's a giant cluster around the Roche Pit, but Dazzle goes down next. It's looking bad for Moscow 5. ZXC does still have the Aegis. Sand King trying to make it here. They get a recovery kill onto the Spectre. That helps, but it's already a 1 for 3. S4 bumps into Afterlife. Remember, he does have the Epicenter here, so maybe a chance for some more kills. Stun onto Kuro. ZXC makes it happen. Now it's a 2 for 3. Are we still on chase? Okay, no, he decides to pull back. S4 and Bruce Split right there doing a lot of work to help them out in the early start of that fight. Couldn't get that prize troll down, though. And because of that, he, st he stayed alive, got a nice little double kill for himself. Look at how quickly Secret go back on the offensive, though. Yeah. They smoke up and just see if this troll is just farming the woods. They want to get rid of this Aegis. Here we yeah. go. Blink over. Lasso. S4 is there. Thunderclap. Give him the crit. That'll be the Aegis. Now can they kill him again? There is support Ooh. nearby. Burrow Strike connects onto Zai. That's an epicenter channel. He can't interrupt it in time. Zai pays for it. Bat Rider for the Aegis. I don't know, Coddle Guy. I just don't know sometimes. Doesn't stop oh, there. Oh, Afterlife. Fucking... Man, he's been putting in so much work as the Sand King. Getting catch up. This guy's kills a machine. And He's been involved in 12 of their 18 kills. And you might think, well, it's a Sand King. Come on, he hits everybody with his ult. He gets a lot of assists. But those are eight last hits. And Only I'm, four assists. And this isn't a Sand King like we've come to know where just like, oh, he just sits in the woods and does Sandstorm and gets a Blink Dagger then is, you know, in the game. He's been in the game. All over the place, setting things up, he making has, plays happen. He, he got solo killed. killed the Bat Rider yeah. twice in the lane. It's really impressive stuff. 
But there is a Radiance now out on the Spectre. So even though RTZ's down, he's still at the tail end of the pack of cores. The road to recovery begins now. A very late Radiance, but a couple of good team fights here. And they can get this Spectre back to where she needs to be. About 2,500 gold, 5,000 experience is the lead for Team Secret right now. As they continue to farm around, Troll holding on to his seat as the number one farmer. Moving into the Eye of Scotty next. Looking for some big stats and some slows to go with his axes. I, I know it's only 26 minutes into this one, but the late game... I'd have to say Secret should have the upper hand here. Hmm. Spectre, definitely the ultimate in super six-slotted big boom-boom carries. Mm -hmm. But Troll, he's no slouch. And the Veno does surprisingly well in the late game once those BKBs get down to five seconds. Even a, even a pipe is just not enough to mitigate the damage once you get Veil Ags. So it's... I would say Secret have like a slight edge in the late game. I don't think there's one team that has an obvious... This Ooh, goes to 60 minutes. Lasso going to be used on a Tusk Illusion. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. But I think where it also helps for Secret in the late game, though, is their support staff. You have a pretty high ceiling for both uh, Potom and Dr uh, not Drow. Ventral Spirit, as far as their potential in the late game. You That's know. true, though. Ventral Puppy Spirit Aura. Almost. Good right click. Puppy's going to be the one who obviously is not going to have much of anything. But yeah. Arcane Boots earn. This will this will be a hard transition. But to go Kuro, to who doesn't have to be kind of the ward person, has Medallion already in Phase Boots for even harder. I mean, look how hard just the Ventral Spirit hits. That's true. He has a support. Has 1k gold. A slot to work with here. I'm very curious to see what he's going to get. Yeah. Can't underestimate the power of the Sigil either. Tusk is putting some points in. We'll see initiation onto the Bat Rider. Swap out to keep him safe. Kuro takes the Walrus Punch. Axes go flying around. There's that Ice Shards. And Renator, does he actually end up falling here? He snowballs into the base. You better find this kill. He brings Afterlife with him. Renator goes down one for one. But it is M5 asserting their dominance here. They dive into the tier threes for that. Split push is real though. S4 gets a tier two tower in the bottom lane. And meanwhile, Arteezy just continues to soak up farm in that safe lane. Nothing of value really lost here for Secret. They just trade one for one, but mm -hmm. getting those towers does tip that little skirmish into their favor. Scotty now complete on your troll. Gem gonna be picked up on Puppy. And Afterlife on his Sand King has 2,400 gold here. He's probably gonna go right for a Veil. Not just good for him. They have a Venom answer too. They do. You're right. Venom and the veil would be a pretty potent grab here. I think Venom will get it eventually. Uh, if this I mean, goes I, on like you know 45 minutes, it's definitely in his trajectory somewhere. I know they have a BKB on Zai already on his Bat Rider, pretty much near complete as he already has the recipe and will have it after a stack here or two. Um, but the effect of Veil does go through BKB if they can kind of work out the timing a bit. And Lane. oh, Epi. big Epi onto Arteezy. I don't think it's enough damage, though. No, he can't find not. these solo kills anymore. And now Afterlife, he's going to get punished for this. Potom ult comes out, and S4 is right there with the blink clap. Uh oh. They punish the Sand King. That might have been a, a hard taste of reality right now for the Sand King at where the game is right now. Yeah, no, definitely so. And. His buyback is still on cooldown from earlier, so he's in the well for a really long time. It seemed like a really long timer, and that was his first death since the buyback, I think. So, well, good gank there from Seeker. Not really a gank, a uh, counter gank, I suppose yeah. you should really call Sanking it. Sanking loses a big chunk of that gold he's been saving up to, yep. which is unfortunate for him. But Bat Rider with a BKB on the horizon, probably a four staff out for Kuro. Has Artor bought anything yet? Yep. The Casual Vitality Booster. Great item on the spec. You pick it up nice and early. Gives you a decent HP buffer. And then you can always just transition into a heart whenever the moment arises. Uh -oh. There you go. More <laughs> staff blink forward. Finds the Dazzle. Pulls him right into Puppy. And they've got more than enough stuns to stop that Dazzle from getting out the grave. Another nice gank. And all of a sudden, it's a 5v3 on the field. With this Mask of Madness, Boots of Travel, Blink, Four Staff, Bat Rider, Zai covers so much ground so quick. Yeah. It's like one second he's farming top, and the next second he's at the ancient camp of Radiant Side taking out Eventual Spirit. Yeah, he is absurdly fast. Top tier one tower will fall. There is not a glyph available, and they give this last hit to Arteezy. It'll help his bottom line, of course. Puppy, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, trying to repel this push at their tier two. Axe is okay. Never mind. Here we go. There's the initiation. Blink in. Primal splits used. They'll put the troll up in the cyclone. They isolate the tusk. He goes down next. 
And they're just going to try to chase down Shomi. Not much the Venno can do to get out. He falls. ZXC almost TPs home. The arrow misses him, but there's that Cyclone from the Storm Panda. And this will be a disastrous fight for M5. See if come back. The uh, hammers are falling from the skies, S4 and it's a three for nil. is going crazy on this brew. He, he is playing so good. It's like he's Maybe. totally the unsung hero. He's 14 and 2, so you can't see he's an unsung hero, but you get caught up in everything else that's going crazy in this game. You just kind of forget the fact that he's S4 been putting in so much work. Actually melting faces. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very true. They're looking for a gank onto Afterlife. They smoked up for this, and they won't find it. Actually, did they smoke in it? I'm not even sure. Getting loopy at this hour, man. Your Brewmaster, though, has his AC and nearly 2k gold after he farms up this Ancient Stack. Towards that next item, I mean, this is where you're starting to consider, like, what do you get? Like, a, a, a Basher into Abyssal on your Brew at this point? Like, yeah. serious right-click damage is about to be coming out. Yeah, Secret's starting to run away with this. 7,500 net worth, about 12,000 experience as they group up and start to take team fight after team fight. Arteezy will rotate mid, find some farm. He can always haunt in if a fight does break out. There's an Assault Karas up on the Brewmaster as well. So yeah, I guess Basher makes sense next. Or does he need a BKB here? So he can never go wrong with a BKB. Big Numb caught by the lasso, pulled into an arrow. And that is one easy way to kill a Shadow Priest. All right, so now there's sustained power. <laughs> Gonna be out 40 seconds, no buyback. Should make for an easy tier two to cover here. Secret, if they choose to engage, they have Haunt ready to go on Arteezy as he just kind of finds his own farm in the mid lane, but their hand's full. Still on there the top. Is. Haunt the initiation. Jump. They go yep. on to show me the blink clap split. The snowball buys him a little bit of time, but as soon as they pop out, they meet their certain doom. Six feet under with now three heroes in the grave. Mm -hmm. Tusk has a buyback, but that's about it. Oh, Afterlife, he's about to get scouted here. He does. He blinks back to safety. Joins Troll, but they're the only two defenders yeah. here. They're about to lose all outer towers. Their potential to farm outside of their base grows pretty limited at that point. And Secret will begin to just kind of consume the majority of the gold available on the map. And at that point could suffocate and take out Moscow 5. All those crabs chewing on the internet lines again. Get those crabs out of here! Oh, wait. There's a big one coming up. Oh! Oh, Look get that it. thing off the screen. We got a game to play. Oh, Jesus. It's ruining my immersion. Move it away. Move it away. Thank you, puppy. You leap, and that scares the uh, the crab away. Well done. Well done. What a player. Hopefully they can find all their lost packets. Rotation to bottom here. Zai moves in with his boots of travel to start scouting out. Moscow 5 territory, and plus will take all that sweet, delicious jungle farm away and for himself as they will circle around the Roche area. Could go for it as it's up and ready to go. Zai's probably going to plant down this one Ob's Worm in some sort of position where they could see if Moscow 5 want to come contest. But getting a hold of this Aegis will easily secure Secret's path to going into high ground and potentially taking this game. At this point, they have just moved so far and ahead as far as the farm and with all these sweet grabs and kills that the comeback factor for Moscow 5 is I don't know even even worse than game number one <laughs> yeah now we're down to 14k net worth 12 or 20k experience this yeah. lead is just jumping in the favor of the die you see the kills really adding up 36 to 19 now M5 go for a very high risk play here into the Roche pit. Uh -oh. Secret already and waiting. They didn't even smoke in here. Oh CXC boy. caught by the lasso, split from S4. There will be a snowball, but just buys them a little bit of time. Big Num goes down first. Now ZXC in the middle of the pit. Fire being laid down. He's whirling those axes, but it just doesn't seem to make a difference. Walrus punch on Zai. He shrugs it off. Panda's starting to go down. Burrow strike away, but Puppy chases him down. Chomi misses the Gale. Now on the other side of the fight, ZXC finally dies as Arteezy joins the party, uses the haunt. Reality's in. Now going hard onto Chomi, following in to Afterlife. Can he close the gap? It looks like Afterlife may live, but quite obviously here, a very successful fight for Team Secret. No buybacks utilized. All five still alive. And they kill three on the side of Moscow 5. And if they want, they could heal up here. They have Puppy with a couple of urn charges to start sending out. And they will go for the Roche. So they will take the Aegis themselves. That was 
ballsy is an understatement there for Moscow Five. They just kind of smoke like, in. Get, let's just go for Roche. I mean, there's this ward right here. <laughs> it's Solemn coming from a mile away, and they're just like, "Yep, let's just like, charge." You know, I don't see secret on the map. Maybe they aren't at Roche. Let's just go in and make it happen. I don't know. That seemed like a gamble, or a, a roll of the dice, but they got, they got snake eyes. Yeah, they they certainly do, and. Uh, Moscow 5 now really on their last leg. That felt kind of like a Hail Mary type smoke, but they forgot the smoke. Big Numb leading the charge. Okay, everyone just goes back to farming for now. Secret will slow down the tempos. How's Arteezy's inventory looking? He's got to have some new way. He's got a full hearted Tarask. Now yeah. 1,500 gold on top of it. This Spectre has more than recovered. Yeah. Now out farming the troll. Yeah, by the, you know, they were putting so much attention onto Arteezy. That you had people like Zai who were able to farm up incredibly on their bat. And then they kind of went on a tear along with S4. And while Moscow 5 had their hands full with a bat and a brew, Arteezy's like, I'm just going to farm. And when I need to be involved, I'll just hit my R button. Uh-oh, mid lane. Bignum in trouble. Jump 4, S4. Clap, arrow. Will connect. He's going to take a few casual smacks right here. He'll wait, step away, come back, boom, right in the face. See you later. Beyond godlike for S4. Now down bottom, the split push begins. Secrets start to move in towards the high ground. It's a refresher, Batrider. The demon you special. Okay. We look at look at him fly. He's like a Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> look at him fly. It's like a 747. That's not a man. That's a bird on a Man, with a man on it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Glyph is used. Secret. They're moving into the base. Here we go. Lasso on to Afterlife. He's the big target. They're just going to blow him up. He goes down quick. Or does he? He channels the Epi. And oh, no, he doesn't. Second Lasso is going to catch Troll and pull him back now. Buy back onto the Sand King, though. Here's your haunt. This is rough for M5. They're oh. putting up the best fight they can, but I just don't think they can do it. The snowball stops Arteezy in front of the well, but now Renator. Boom. Bada bing. It's Crits over. from S4. Whoa. Oh. Big Epi coming. Comes out, but Secret just live right through it. They shrug it off and go, yeah, nice Epi. We're still alive. Sun Renator now dealing with the split of the Brewmaster. That's a dieback for him. Arteezy still alive. Cyclone onto the Venomancer. He's getting low, but not low enough to be afraid of squaring up against Shomi. Now the Venom goes down, and M5 will tap out. GG is called. What a series, man. Woo. What a series. People come into this series like this. They see the odds, and they figure... Secret are going to get in here and just do whatever the hell they want. Well, for yeah. two games, they pretty much did. <laughs> but, but, props again to Moscow 5. This team came in late notice. I don't know if they were playing in anything else. They could have just been like, quickly throw together their five-man roster, which is clearly some new players. And they take the spot of Virtus Pro. Their first day, their first game of play is going to be against a team like Secret. And they get that win, game number one, with double mm -hmm. rapier sniper, which is amazing. Yeah. Game number two didn't go so well. No. And then game number three was what was close. that start? Yes. That the, the the snowball to the high ground. I thought the game was just going to be over there. If you joined us late into this game, if you were one of those viewers that came in before the first blood was drawn, we have a BTS moment that is either up or processing that will be here ASAP when the videos catch up. You need to watch it. It yeah. is absolutely the most ridiculous yeah. first blood I've, think I've, I've ever seen. I don't think I've, I've never seen anything I don't like think that. Anyone's ever done that in the history of Dota. Not in a competitive game that's been on stream, I don't think. That was ridiculous. Four heroes stuck on the high ground because of their own tusk snowball. Absurd. Thank so. goodness they could snowball to the creep wave. Because if oh. they didn't have that, I don't think they were getting out for until who knows how long. Three minutes but, until but the courier is upgraded. so deep in their yeah. jungle. It's like they're just going to drop a ward and scout out for a courier. Yeah, that was, that was okay. very ridiculous. So. But, one thing is for sure, Secret has been somehow putting up ridiculous ass games in Starlight. We're now two days in a row where I've seen some of the most action-packed, fun Dota games that I've had the privilege They're of casting. Clearly taking qualifiers very seriously. Yeah. Right? I mean, they put some clowny drafts together, but... They're so individually talented mm -hmm. that it's so impressive. Well, I mean, that game... The first time they played Spectre. Yeah. I mean, you know, Arteezy, he had a rough start. All he had to do was kind of wait it out and build up the farm and come back. Mm -hmm. But it was S4 and Zai, that game. Dude, S4 Zai. and Zai. Zai farmed like a madman on that bat rider. Got killed solo a few times, but 12, 4, and 17 made so much space. S4, 19, 2, and 17. He was just involved in so many kills, controlled so much of that game. You just, you can't let that, that player hero combo is just too good. It's really ridiculous.
Every day of uh, Starlighter Europe has been something special so far. So tomorrow, it's been a flower, that's for sure. We'll be back tomorrow with more European action. I believe Ooh. it's going to be actually myself and Purge Ooh, for tomorrow. Good. I think I'm on America with Merlini tomorrow afterwards. You're going to be on America then? Yes. I think America is I either... know I'm doing America. I think I'm either with Merlini or Gods. I forgot. I want to say America is also happening right now or about to happen. If it hasn't started yet, then it should be... I'm doing you guys the favor and looking yeah. uh, two minutes into the Looks future like for it you. Might, might it is started. on BTS2. Oh, yeah, BTS2. Twitch.tv slash Beyond the Summit 2. You can see the America matchup right now. It's going to be uh, Void Boys versus E-Hug and also Wheel versus Pain. Uh, exciting. Should be some good stuff. Exciting stuff. So, very good. We're done for the day. It's been a pleasure. If you all enjoyed the cast, thank you so much for sticking with us through thick and thin, through delays and pauses. I'm Zayori. He's Coddle Guy. If you enjoyed the cast, give us both a follow on Twitter. They're in the title of this broadcast. And, of course, follow at Beyond the Summit to stay up to date with all things happening here in the studio and with Star Ladder Season 12. We'll see you tomorrow. G2A.com oh! Game the best video game store ever! Fast as lightning! Solid as a rock! Cheap as duck! <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace! Remember G2A.com! The best video game store ever!